Penuel the Black Pen, I'm not here to say much except thank you so much to Floyd Shibambu, who I believe is the Deputy President of the Economic Freedom Fighters or the EFF. I think back in the day, for some of us, listening to Trevor Manuel's budget speech uh, or the speeches he used to give for the budget speech used to be so amazing. They were funny, educational, very captivating. And I'd like to think in the past couple of years, every time there's a State of the Nation address, the SONA, I always look forward to listening to Floyd Chibambu's response at the SONA debate, and he did not disappoint. I'm going to drop a link to his piece for the SONA debate um, that he did. I'm not going to speak about the technicalities of what he spoke about. I think you can listen to that yourself. But I want to thank Floyd for constantly being an academic for constantly doing the research, for constantly getting the data and the stats and the facts, so that when he comes to Parliament, he respects the fellow parliamentarians and he respects those of us who are going to be consuming what he's going to say. He is brave, he is bold, he is very well spoken and he is articulate and he speaks to the hearts and the minds of intelligent, visionary, passionate South Africans that want to see a better country. And especially at the end of the speech where he was highlighting the fact that Cyril Ramaphosa and the rest of the ANC government have created a man-made solution, a man-made problem rather, in the ESCOM load shedding and power outages. Because they are so focused on privatizing the power generation of ESCOM to independent power producers who are the friends of Cyril Ramaphosa and other ANC people. And they are not looking to really solve the problem of power in this country, which is deemed a basic uh, right according to our constitution. He explains uranium and alternative power. He explains how the state should be leading in terms of power, uh, in terms of alternative power. He highlights that coal should be our base load for energy generation. He references China, he references Russia, and he speaks about what type of vision and solutions we should be looking to as a country. He's 100% correct. Cyril Ramaphosa, you have to remember, is the same person who, when he was running Shanduga and while he was deputy president of the country, went and worked with Glencore to supply coal at a premium to ESCOM. And then right after that, his brother-in-law becomes one of the beneficiaries of independent power producer licenses given by another brother-in-law, Jeff Khadebe. And then now you see what's happening with the Glencore wanting a public-private partnership, which is going to be dealing with not just our railway systems, but also our ports, the harbors and the like, especially in places like Richards Bay, where a lot of our coal is transported and exported out. And then there's a huge pipeline for gas and the like that they want to get their hands on. These guys, I think, have paid over a billion dollars in terms of fines. for. All. They've had over a billion dollars, I think, in bribes. I don't know how much they've had to pay as a fine. But for some weird reason, they were caught with no foul play in South Africa while the president of South Africa does business with the exact same corrupt company. A lot of it is man-made. A lot of it doesn't put South African first, but it does put the desires and the greed of a capitalist Sil Ramaphosa, his friends at Glencore, his, his brother-in-law Patrice, Rama, uh, Patrice uh, Mutsipe, and some of, the, some of his other business associates, associates as well. Again, thank you very much to Floyd Shibambu. I've got my issues with the EFF. I do not want to vote for the EFF. I do think Julius Malima flops now and then. I don't support the removal of the borders. I do believe that they claim to be socialist, but they live a very capitalist lifestyle. They enjoy some of the finer things in life. I think a lot of what they say is just political rhetoric, and it sounds good to some of us. But I have to appreciate an enorme umsebenzo the way I see it. And every single year, without fail, when it comes to the Sonnet debate, Floyd Chibambu drops the hammer. And he hits us with stats and facts and the like. And it would be nice if we could get more young leaders to not only speak right, to not only know the right things, but to very importantly get involved in running this country. Get involved in fixing maybe ESCOM or finding alternative energy spaces for them to provide energy for their people. And for people to be involved in even fixing things like our education system. Floyd Shibambu points, uh, pokes at Fili Mbalula, the Secretary General of uh, the ANC, uh, saying that, look, some of the things he's discussing are, are, are higher grade for him and that he would not have learned them at a school level. But the reality is a lot of our parliamentarians are not intelligent. Just basic intelligence, basic problem solving, they struggle. 
So when it comes to the more higher grade and complex issues we have as a country, we have an issue. Floyd highlights, of course, the, the monopoly that multi-choice has had with ICASA in pay television. You know, one of the things he doesn't raise is my frustration at the fact that data is still one of the highest. Our data in South Africa is still amongst the most expensive in the world. And in this country, which is a developing nation, just like electricity, just like water, Wi-Fi and the ability to connect to the internet for free, if not for free, then for extremely cheap, is a fundamental need for this country because what the internet does is it gives the best education at the fingertips of some of the poorest people. It gives people access to an international market. It doesn't matter what you are selling. On the internet, you go on social media platforms, you go on certain websites, you register, you log on, you market your, your offerings to all the people in the world and you can sell to those people and bring foreign currency into the country along with learning things on the internet. So I really, for me, I'm still waiting for a political party that is going to be saying free Wi-Fi for all South Africans. Free, fast, unshaped, uncapped Wi-Fi to all South Africans. And the free Wi-Fi is going to be for educational purposes and platforms and things like pornography, things like garbage websites, all of those you'll have to then pay for on your own. But for a Wikipedia, for a Google search, for a Khan Academy, for a Coursera, for something like some of the YouTube platforms, especially if you look at the Hustlers Corner, the Virtual Kuku, if you look at the Penal Show as an example, these platforms that educate South Africans on a daily basis, those should be absolutely free to all South Africans so that we can uplift and upskill this nation so that it can compete with the rest of the world. Floyd Shibambu, I see you, my brother. I thank you very much. And I'm hoping that more young people will take on your example and be a force to be reckoned with and be brave and speak truth to power in how we can move South Africa and South Africans forward. Salute. Danke EFF. Danke Floyd.